sorry about that. I had minor technical difficulties. Hey, everybody. The Super Vader 400 here back for another review. And this time, this is another re-review of the entire Marvel Cinematic Universe. And my short thoughts on the upcoming film. On the most recent release film. It's already out. Marvel Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. When this this later on um this year, well actually June of this year, and of course um November of this year, I'll um do um re reviews re reviews of um actually later this review, I'll do re reviews of um the Marvel Cinematic Universe with this film, and of course the next one, the next one um Spider Man Homecoming included with those two films included then of course later on probably next year i'll redo the marvel cinematic universe review series with not only these two not only guardians of the galaxy volume two and of course spider-man homecoming included but also um also what's that other film oh yeah also thor ragnarok included when we get to infinity war but right now this is um this is my review of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I'm already watching the first Guardians of the Galaxy film again for a longer review on that film and of course a um and of course um for a longer review on that film and of course as a setup to the Guardians of the Galaxy volume 2. I'm also going to be doing a Spider-Man review series review series coming up. But right here, this is my review of the Marvel Cinematic Universe series. Never get sick of the Marvel Cinematic, never get sick of praising and talking about how awesome the Marvel Cinematic Universe is. I love Kevin Feige, I love Josh Whedon, I appreciate for what they have done, appreciate what they have done for Marvel. Not only what they have done for Marvel, what they have done for movies, and I will always respect and appreciate and brag about what they accomplished in movies. The Avengers and Captain America Civil War, both of these movies did something I didn't think superhero movies, especially these type of superhero movies, would ever do, would ever do, and that is break the one billion mark. Break the one billion mark. Get over like a million, a billion dollars at the box office. These are the most popular films of all time, of all times, and now the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It's now after almost what ten years after almost um after almost um nine after I was about to be ten next year after almost nine years they're like a dynasty they're like guaranteed success at the box office and they claim they have ideas well up until 2032 I'll be an old man by that time and they and they claim they'll still have ideas for movies and series up until that point. Up until that point, but with that being said, this right here is my um, this is my um review of the Marvel um cinematic um universe. Just what they accomplished. It all started with Iron Man one. Like I said in my previous review of the Marvel cinematic universe, which the link to that, the link to that review will be in the description box below. But last year I did a um, in my last um. Marvel Sin MCU review, I said Iron Man. When I saw Iron Man for the first time, it was awesome. But at the same time, it was just another superhero movie. It was another generic addition to the Spider-Man, X-Men, Fantastic Four, and Daredevil, and, and Hulk, and Blade play phase. This was just another superhero movie to me. But then at the, at the, in, the in the post credits, I see Fury. I see um, Samuel L. Jackson as Nick Fury, as Nick Fury, and see them setting up an Avengers film. Then I later see Tony Stark in, in, in the next Marvel Cinematic Universe film of that year, The Incredible Hulk, at the end of that film, setting up the Avengers. I was like, wow. Because, see, prior to this, all of the superhero films were in a, were in a universe onto themselves. They weren't connected. They weren't connected because they were owned by the, the, they were they were produced by different studios. But this is the first time I would see a film with a shared 
universe. 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 That was a big thing back in 2008. And Iron Man films. So far, no Iron Man film has come close to seeing Iron Man for the first time. Film was awesome. One of my favorite things about the original Iron Man. Spot on with the Iron Man comic books. All the spot on for the most part. Only differences is the omission of Hawkeye's origin. Who Hawkeye he made his debut in an Iron Man comic, and of course the way the bad guy Obadiah Stane was killed. Like I said in the comic books, he commits suicide by using his Unger monger suit to smash his head, to smash his head, and various other people use the Iron Monger suit. In the Iron Man film, it ends in spectacular fashion where Iron Man electrocutes Obadiah Stane, causing him and the Iron Monger suit to fall into the reactor and disintegrate, destroying him and the Iron Monger suit, per killing, completely killing off the Iron Monger character. But I like how spot on the comic was, was. And then Robert Downey Jr. was born to play Tony Stark, man. His whole life prior to this, prior to the MCU film, mirror Tony Stark's real, re um, I, alcoholism, um, mirror on Tony Stark's um, alcoholism in the comic books. So he was born to play this role. In times, I forget that. I sometimes can't tell the difference between he plays the role so well. Can't tell the difference between Robert Downey Jr. and the Tony and the character of Tony Stark. Man, way to go! An awesome film. And so far, none of the Iron Man films have come close. None of the solo Iron Man films have come close to seeing Iron Man for the first time. Man, Terrence Howard. And I said I thought Terrence Howard as a role as Rhodey was much better, but as War Machine, Don Cheeto is probably better, man. Better, better, awesome, awesome film. The next film, Incredible Hulk. Like I said, not really a good film, but I like this film. I like this film for first off being connected, for being in a cinematic universe with the Iron Man film. Next, I like this film for its action content, whereas the last one didn't really have. Lots of um, action. Then not only having action content, but inserting M.L. Blonsky, who M.L. Blonsky was the MVP of the film. The cast in that film, especially Edward Norton, like I said, the cast really wasn't that good. Edward Norton doesn't act like Bruce Banner. He acts like his Fight Club character. That's the previous film Edward Norton in was pop. That's the film he was most known for before appearing in this film. And that's why I'm glad they replaced him in future films with Mark Ruffalo. I'm also I also didn't like the design of Hulk. They tried to make him look like his '90s comic book design. His kind okay, it didn't look real. The 2003 Hulk looked more real, looked more real than them. Looked more re looked more real than this Hulk um, right here. But like I said, I love this film for including the Abomination for the most part, only changing a couple of things. Being all just like Iron Man, being spot on with the comics, and while the film itself just really isn't all that good, the uh the two action sequences, the um, scene in the park where Iron Man, where Hulk uses uses the tank like Captain America's shield when he's fighting human form, the human form of Abomination, M. L. Blonsky. Any scene with M. L. Blonsky in it, and of course the final scene, and the final scene where M. L. Blonsky not only becomes the Abomination, but that in that final street fight, that final street fight, man. Like I said, Incredible Hulk, man. What an awesome um, what not the best MCU film, but an awesome um. But an awesome film. Next film, of course, 2009 didn't have an MCU film, so the next one would be would not be until 2010. Iron Man, Iron Man 2. While Iron Man 2, in my opinion, has a better plot than the first Iron Man. Like I said, doesn't beat seeing Iron Man for the first um for the first time. The biggest problem I have with this film is that they didn't focus. While they focused a great deal, they still developed um Tony Stark's Iron Man character. They didn't focus a great deal on the villain, on the villain, Mickey Rourke's um, character, Vanko, Vanko. They focused way more on setting up the Avengers film. And secondly, um, 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 Natasha Remner, Black Widow, um, she wasn't that good. She wasn't, um, in this film, the actor portraying her, she wasn't that good in this um movie she was just mostly there for that kick for that kick ass action scene and to set up the Avengers. Nick Fury, um Samuel Jackson's Nick Fury, like I said, Samuel L. Jackson, he plays Samuel L. Jackson. He plays Samuel L. Jackson in that film. In the future installments they would fix that and he would be more closer to the Nick Fury um character. But this film was good, especially um my favorite scene which was Iron Man's introduction.
introduction, which was Iron Man introduction and the awesome fight scene between Iron Man, I, or Tony Stark and the Iron Man scene and Rhodey in the War Machine suit with Queens, another one bites the dust playing in the background. Also love the soundtrack. Also um love the soundtrack, the ACDC um soundtrack. So like I said, um still a good MCU installment, but nowhere near as powerful, nowhere near as awesome and epic as the first one was. Next film would not be until 2011. The next MCU installment, and that would be Thor 2011. What an awesome film. Only problem I have with this film is that since this film is dark, the fight sequences are hard to see and remember, man. The fight sequences really, really weren't that good. It's mostly the story and characters that had me in, um, that had me in, um, that had me with this film, um, film was awesome. This film was so awesome back in 2011 when I saw it that this film, along with Green Lantern and Captain America, which what I was, which was, which is what I would see later that year, changed uh, my um, perspective on um, superhero. Um, changed my perspective on superhero movies. I now have a new standard on superhero movies after seeing those three awesome films um, that year. Then the next year, then um. Then, um, and, um, Thor, I like how, while they, they changed a lot of stuff, they were, for the most part, they did the, my opinion, they did the comic books justice, and they inserted a lot of stuff from, um, the comic books. Asgard looks like it was taken out of the comic book and inserted into the film, and the scene with Thor, Chris Hemsworth, in street clothes, that is in the comic book. Of course, they had to change several things from, from the comic book, which I'm going to detail in a longer review of Thor. Next is Captain America, um, 2011. While changing a lot of stuff from the Captain America comic book, I like how, um, this film, for the most part, was still true to the Captain America comic book. And this film right here surprised the hell out of me back in 2011. I didn't think a Captain America film in this day and age would be, um, good. A war film from the 40s that depicts life in the 40s, I didn't think that would ever be good, but it was awesome. And I didn't give... Chris Evans, I didn't give him a chance as Captain America. I thought, um, I thought he was an awesome human torch, but I thought he was, um, too, um, too much of a pretty boy, too much of a pretty boy and a model to portray the much older, wiser, more rugged Captain America. He proved me wrong, and now he's one of the best things about the MCU, man. He proved me, um, he proved me wrong, and just like with Tony Stark and Iron Man, he is Captain America to me. Sometimes it's hard to tell the difference, man. He is, like I said, these guys, they are their characters, man. They are their characters. Um, next is, um, who else? Who, who else? Um, who else is in this movie? Who else is in this movie? Um, so, um, yeah, um, um, and I like how this film, watching it now, like I said, not the masterpiece it was back in 2011, but it's still awesome. And I love how it sets up the next one, The Winter Soldier, and probably the best of all time, Civil War, man. Civil War. So um, this will be the final. This will be the final MCU installment until the greatest film of all time. I don't feel like getting it right here. It's it's somewhere in this stat right here. I don't feel like getting it. And that is. The Avengers 2012, man. The best superhero film of all time. Seeing each of these movies lead up to this awesome moment. And not only was this film awesome, but I like how it improved, it improved the flaws from the previous, from the previous, um, from the previous installments. And also, oh, this film for the most part, while changing a couple of things, this film for the most part was spot on with the Avengers, um, with the Avengers comic books. Loki came to Earth seeking Avenger, seeking Avengers against his brother Thor, and, and the Avengers came together because of something Loki did. Next was one thing I liked was Hawkeye. In the comic books, Hawkeye, his first appearance, he was a villain. He was a villain, except he was tricked by someone in the comic books. Here, he was hypnotized into serving evil until um, um, the spell, um, a, a Loki scepter was retrieved and um, it was um, broke. But I like how you remember Hawkeye was a um, bad guy and so much awesome action, so many, too much action um, to cause, man. Oh, like I said, just an um, awesome film, man. The next film. 
the next film after the Avengers would be Iron Man 3. This right here is my least favorite of the MCU. However, I don't hate it as much as I did back when I saw it in 2013. But this right here is one of the weaker installments. And the main problem I have is like for this is that this is a Tony Stark. This is a Tony Stark movie. It's not much of an Iron Man movie. When I saw the cool poster, I was expecting I, Tony Stark in that badass new Iron Man costume fighting Mandarin. And see, I like Mandarin. See, most of Tony Stark's Iron Man villains are businessmen with their own own suit or ruthless own businessmen. The only two, the only three unique villains he has are Dynamo, another villain calling himself the Living Laser, and last but not least, the most iconic one, the Mandarin. See, Mandarin is a different villain. He's like a, a wizard Skeletor from Masters of the Universe type villain, type um type of villain with his rings and I was looking forward to seeing him and Iron Man duke it out on the screen but I didn't get that I didn't get that instead I got um Iron Man controlling suits and I didn't like either of Mandarin so the Mandarin subplot the Mandarin reveal the real the Mandarin reveal plot at the end doesn't bother me anymore because I didn't like either Mandarin I didn't like Ben Kingsley's Mandarin he looked like a cosplayer or something from Lord of the Rings not the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and then you had Guy Pierce's um, Mandarin. I, I think that's his name. Guy Pierce's Mandarin, who, who was like he was like Lex Luthor. That's what Lex Luthor would do if he injected himself with Kryptonite and wanted to fight Superman. That would be cool for a Superman plot. That would be cool for a Superman plot. So um, so um, yeah. And then this film was just too damn funny, and it was funny. It was hilarious. I was laughing, but I didn't come to laugh. I didn't come to laugh and see this is the problem I don't, this is what I don't like about the Marvel Cinematic Universe see the Marvel Cinematic Universe is good because of Kevin Feige and Josh Whedon the one thing I don't like is the directors they assign to direct these products these directors like I keep saying they do not respect comic books they do not respect comic books they do not respect comic books they pretty much come in and do what do do what do whatever they please that's pretty much what they do they come in and do what they please man but um next is um so um yeah but i do love um the, the i do like how there's a one shot an animated one shot called all hail to the king coming after this where um in prison they show they show hammer from iron man 2 as one of the inmates in a prison they show scenes of the real mandarin showing us that a real mandarin is out there somewhere he'd appreciate these two using his um name and um character so uh, yeah i like that man yes i like that next is um What's the next one? Um, yeah, the next is um, the thir next one was Thor: Dark World. Now, as a action, as a Marvel Cinematic Universe film, as an um, action film, I think this film is much better than the first one. Much more action, much better lighting, much better um, lighting, and awesome seeing Thor and Loki come together. However, the one thing I don't like about this film is the plot and the villain himself, Malkia just isn't that memorable just isn't that memorable or um good but i love the subplot at the end revealing loki survived and what's his name the only thing i like about this film is the uh is the main plot is the main plot and of course lots of unnecessary comedy the comedy was good but it just makes the film look bad it's supposed to be an epic fantasy film and you got all this uh you got all this buffoonery going on, man. And the film pretty much just exists to set up the next film. One of the next films I'm going to talk about, and that's Guardians of the Galaxy. Now, the next film, Captain America, The Winter Soldier. What a phenomenal uh, movie. Story, characters ever. And everyone thinks this is the best Marvel Cinematic Universe film ever. This film is awesome. However, it's not the best because of Falcon's costume. I cannot stand that guy's costume. Everything else about this film is good. But that guy's costume at times just makes this film unwatchable. Uh, despite loving this film a lot, don't watch as much as the other MCU installments because of Falcon's terrible, Sam Wilson, his terrible costume. That looks like something out of uh, G.I. Joe or Agents of uh, S.H.I.E.L.D. That doesn't look like a, a Falcon costume. And that's one of the things I don't like about the Marvel Cinematic Universe. This is actually one of the things I like better about the DC Extended Universe. The DC Extended Universe, they make comic book movies. They take whatever you see in the comic books and insert it onto the screen. Uh, Marvel does that sometimes, but they, they like changing things and making it more reality. 
falcon, instead of being an actual bird man who got his powers from a bird, here he and his whole powers are technology based. He's a man in he's a man with wings. With iron um wings. He's like an iron falcon. He's like an iron falcon. That that's what he uh that's what he is, man. That's what he um that's what he is. But I do love um um, Anthony Mackie, I, do, I think that's his name. I do love him as um, Falcon. I do love the chemistry, and I do love the chemistry between him, between him, Romanoff, Rom Black Widow, Romanoff, and um, Chris Evans. Chris Evans, that alone, what's his name? And of course, the whole rivalry between Bucky and um, Bucky and um, Captain America makes this awesome. But Falcon's costume, just don't think that ruins this film for me. Why it's not the best MCU film? But a lot of people consider it to be the best. I think Civil War, which I'm about to talk about, is much better. The next one on this list, of course, is um, Guardians of the Galaxy. Going into the Guardians of the Galaxy back in 2014, I had no idea on what it was. I had no idea what it was. I didn't even hear about Guardians of the Galaxy until I was watching a, a video of AMC Theater led by John Campia, led by John Campia, where they were discussing that since the Avengers was hugely popular, they can now make this Guardians of the Galaxy film. And I was a huge fan of other franchises like like um, the Avengers, X-Men, Star Wars, Masters of the Universe, and Guardians of the Galaxy looked like those. And when I saw the trails, I was like, mm, this looks pretty good. So I watched an episode of the Ultimate Spider-Man cartoon and both of the, uh, both the Avengers both of their appearances in both of the Avengers cartoons, Earth Mightiest Heroes and Avengers Assemble, to see what I'll be to see what i what I'll be in store for. Then did my own research on the Guardians of the Galaxy franchise and love what I was reading. So I couldn't wait to watch the film. When I saw the film, it was the best thing I've seen. I see it in 3D, which Guardians of the Galaxy and Green Lantern 2011 are the best experiences I've ever had watching movies in 3D. See, it was lifelike, like I was there, man. It was life like I was there, and it was the best thing I've ever seen. Now that I have it on DVD and have watched it several times, I'm watching it right now. I'm watching it right now. Now that I have it on um, DVD, now that I have it on um, DVD, I can see the flaws. And then re re understanding the comic books and reading the first three issues of Marvel's now Guardians of the Galaxy, where Iron Man is a guardian, Tony Stark is a guardian. Tony Stark is a Guardian, I can see the major flaws on the film, but the biggest problem with Guardians of the Galaxy is, which, which is why I accept it due to its flaws, despite its flaws, is that Guardians of the Galaxy should not be a movie. That should actually be a television series, because the series is just, too, the franchise is just, the comic book franchise is just too long. It's just too long. And the, this whole film doesn't have time to cover every character's backstory. Every character you saw, Quill, Gamora, Drax, Rocket, and Groot, and even Ronan and the bad guys, they had various adventures together before they came together as the Guardians of the Galaxy. Yondu, who is a Ravager, a criminal in this film, was a Guardian. He was part of the original Guardians team. And there was a, in the 60s, in the 60s and early 70s, late 60s, early 70s, there was a, um, there was an original Guardians of the Galaxy team. These guys debuted it um in um the Marvel one shot Amazing Fantasies and their own adventures and had their own series of adventures before they came together in two thousand eight. And in two thousand eight, in the comic books it made more sense for them to come together. Here they brought them in the film they brought them together by fate. But it but in the comic books it was much better. Quill after um after the events of the Annihilus the Annihilus storyline, the Annihilus story, he decided that if we need a new team to protect the galaxy instead of reacting, instead of reacting when bad things happen. So he assigned Gamora, Drax, Rocket Raccoon, Rocket Raccoon, um, Groot, and another one named, um, I think the name is Moonstar, um, or Warlock, yeah, Moonstar and Warlock, and of course the, the space dog that you saw at the end of this film. The, the lead, the, the lead uh, to, to protect the galaxy, naming themselves the Guardians of the Galaxy. Here they were brought together by fate. Here together they were brought together um, by fate. Other thing I like about this film was while I like each character's story and how they all came together for one story, I didn't like I didn't like the main plot of this film with, of course, Thanos having Ronan retrieve a special or retrieve a special or for him, and in exchange he would destroy Xandar for Ronan. The reason I didn't like that was because if 
if the Thor, if the orb was on that moon we just saw, why didn't Thanos just go there and get it himself and destroy Xandar himself? Why does he need to cooperate with less powerful people like Ronin? I want to know why they did that in the film. We know why they did this in real life. The Guardians of the Galaxy are not powerful enough to face Thanos. Yes, they need a lesser, more powerful. They need a powerful but lesser villain to deal with. Um, to deal with first, they got to build to that. But that was the only problem I had. Oh, of course, and of course, wasting the villains. Now, for the first one, Korath, he's dead in the comic books. But he 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 was alive for two decades and had multiple adventures before he was killed by Ultron in the comic books for failure to capture Adam Warlock, who's a guardian in the comics. She'll probably be in a future installment of Guardians of the Galaxy to capture um War to capture Adam Warlock. But he had various adventures fighting not only um the Guardians of the Galaxy but also fighting the Avengers. Fighting um fighting on um, the Avengers. Then of course um then of course you had um who else? Who else in this movie? So um then of course Ronan who Ronan who, for most of his appearances, he was a villain. He was an antagonist. He first appeared in Fantastic Four, him and his race, him and his race, and then, but after the witch call it, after the analysis storyline, he's slowly and slowly becoming more of a heroic character. So I was really angry that in the film, they just treated him like an ordinary villain, and they completely wasted him. I, I do appreciate the cartoon, which, now, I prefer watching the movie because the movie has better acting, but the cartoon, the cartoon plot wise is much better than the film much better than the film. I love how they resurrected them in the um, cartoon the cartoon is an alternate sequel to the first film to the first um, Guardians of the Galaxy film Guardians of the Galaxy film but ignores but is not part of the MCU and this upcoming Guardians of the Galaxy sequel ignores everything about that series so um, yeah and I also like how this film took B-list characters and turn them into box office, not only box office gold, but they were one of the highest grossing films of that year, man. They were one of the highest grossing films of that year. Yeah. Yeah, man. Awesome film, man. Awesome film. But still an awesome film, despite the flaws. And I think the sequel, I'm expecting the sequel to be even better. Next film is, of course, um, Avengers Age of Ultron. I couldn't wait for this film after seeing the first Avengers film and every MCU installment leading up to it. But after, but when I read the script, some of that excitement turned to disappointment. I was still looking forward to the film, because at least the action and chemistry between the characters would um, carry the film, would carry the um, film. But um, after seeing, um, but when I saw the screenplay for the film about Tony Stark building a, a robot, to building a robot named Ultron to save the world when the Avengers are unable to, I was like, I didn't, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't accept, I just couldn't accept a robot after seeing powerful villains like Loki, Thanos, and Ronan and Korath. I couldn't, I couldn't see how a robot would be a threat to the Avengers, especially Iron Man, Thor, 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 Incredible Hulk, and um, Loki, Loki, who was supposed to appear in this film, but they cut his appearance out due to the due to crowded script. Due to crowded script, but I saw this film. Not only did this, not only was this film entertaining, this film was awesome. It was bigger and badder than the first one. One thing I like about this film, just like the first one, this film for the most part was spot on with the comics. The Quicksilver in this film was closer to his comic book counterpart than the Quicksilver in the X Men cinematic universe. And I um, like I said, like how it was spot on with the comic books. Even though this is called Age of Ultron, it's actually not the Age of Ultron comic books. You only have to do multiple, you have to do two films, and you have to get the rights back to X-Men, because the X-Men appear in that com comic book. But this is actually, but even though it's called Age of Ultron, it's based on the origin of Ultron and the origin of Vision. What you saw, or Ultron, Ultron and Vision's or origins, that, that, that's in the comic books. That's in the comic books. The, the the way they the way they were brought into this film is how they were created in the comic book. So I like how this was what's his name? J James Spader. He gave new life to what I saw as a bland robot, a bland powerful robot for the Avengers to fight. That's what Ultron was up until seeing this movie, man. Awesome story, action, everything, and awesome film. One thing I don't like about this film, but I applaud them for, was having the balls to kill off an Avenger, and and they killed off um and they killed off um Quicksilver. I 
hated that. I want to see Quicksilver in the future installments, but I applaud Marvel for having balls to do that. A lot of people criticize them saying they, they always play it safe. They didn't do it here. They didn't do it here. They also didn't do it in Civil War. And I like how this film, watching it now, appreciate how this film led up into um, Civil War, which at the time, when I heard that Captain America 3 would be Civil War, I didn't like that, man. I didn't like that. I didn't like that. Next one um, is Ant-Man. Ant-Man, another awesome Marvel Cinematic Universe film. Only thing I like about this film is that this film is not accurate with the comic books, but this was an awesome film. They managed to make a science fiction comedy action film about ants. Good. It's complex. I can't even tell you what the what the what the main um plot is about. The main plot involving the main character, I understand that, but um the, the stuff with with the powers and the ants and stuff, man. Stuff. Um, I mean, this was an old school comic comic book film. They managed to make they managed to make um Daryl Daryl Cross's character, the Yellow Jacket, a guy dressed as a bumblebee, a Yellow Jacket bumblebee intimidating and imposing imposing awesome film only thing i don't like is that they kind of killed off the yellow jacket that's a problem I, that's a problem i have with the marvel Cinematic universe killing off a lot of their important uh bad guys now abomination is still alive he's locked up um um hugo, hugo weaving from captain america the red skull he didn't want to come back so they had to kill his character off they wasted ronan and Korra. Um, they wasted going to court. Malkiel, he wasn't that memorable, and Malkiel is dead in the comic, so I don't expect to see him here. So is the blue guy Lofty from Thor. He's also dead in the character. He's also dead in the comic books. But um, Yellow Jacket, I would love to have seen him build a rivalry with Ant Man. So I wish they would have locked him up, they got him out of the suit and locked him up, and had him come back for revenge in a future installment. But now they killed him off in this film. Yeah. This was an awesome film. I also love it. This actually debuted in Avengers Age of Ultron, but I love the memorable scene between Ant-Man, um, Scott Lang, and um, Falcon. Falcon in his new badass costume. I didn't like that monstrosity, that sci-fi monstrosity he had in, in Winter Soldier, so I'm glad they made something else. They made, um, they made, made something else, which he actually debuted in Age of Ultron, but I, his appearance here, his appearance here with Scott Lang was more memorable. And this film was just so damn funny, even funnier than Guardians of the Galaxy, man. That's one of the highs of this film. This film was never dull. This film was never dull. This film was just hilarious, especially when Pena, who was like the MVP of this film, when he was on screen, man. Yeah, um, yeah, um, yeah, um, yeah. And what's his name? What's his name? What's his name? So, um, um, uh, um, yeah, um. Yeah, um, yeah, so, yeah, what you call, what's his name, so, um, yeah, now the next film is, um, that will be the last film of 2015, the next one will not be until 2016, Cap Captain America, Captain America Civil War, man, Captain America Civil War, what an awesome, um, film, man, coming into this film, I didn't expect this film, I was disappointed, I was disappointed, I was disappointed um, that, they, that they chose to be Captain America Civil War. I saw it as a desperate attempt to catch up with the DC Extended Universe with Batman and Superman coming to, um, together. They tried to um, counter um, that plot. I didn't like them being so well. I didn't want to see a film where Iron Man and Captain America were fighting each other with Spider-Man in the middle. That's what the comic book was. But when I heard that, when I saw that how Avengers Age of Ultron would lead up into that film, and saw the cast of characters they would have involved in this film, I couldn't wait to see um, this film. This film was almost like an Avengers sequel. was almost like an Avengers um, sequel. And then I saw the film. Man, was the film awesome, man. Man, was the film awesome. And I like how um, they responded to critics. They, 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 they proved that they could make a dark movie. They could have all the silliness and comedy. They can make a dark movie. You have Rhodey get paralyzed, the fate worse than death. You have Rhodey get paralyzed. Um, and I like how the ending, they didn't, they weren't afraid to have a um bad ending. You had um, Iron Man turning on, turning on Captain America, and them, and them engaging in a brutal fight after um, after um, it was revealed that Bucky hypnotized, killed Tony Stark's father, killed Tony Stark's father. 
the Avengers, um, the, the Avengers fighting each other and then being locked up. Yeah, this is not, oh, they're going to fight, but they come together in the end like in the other films. No. They were locked up. Of course, Captain, yeah, oh, they, of course, and oh, they were locked up. So, uh, yeah, man. Um, awesome film. And then, like, what they did in the box office, topping the bo a Captain America film, breaking the one billion uh, mark. So, um, yeah, awesome film, man. Now the next, now the next one is um, what's the next film? What's the next film? Um, what's the next film? Um, um, the next film, the next film that year. Oh yes, Doctor Strange, 2016. Love this film because this one was different. This one was about magic, chi, martial arts, and mysticism, and it was all anime. It was all anime like. Versus the other MCU installments, which are like science fiction, fantasy based films, fantasy based films, fantasy um, based films. The closest film to this was the Thor movie. The Thor movie, who, of course, Thor Christopher Hemsworth, he appears in a post credit scene. And I like how this was um, different. I also like how this was different from the um, end where the good guys really didn't win. Um, to Dr. Strange, he had, to, he had to perform a um, spell that caused it, that caused him and Dormammu to repeat the same moment over and over again to get Dormammu to take his ze zealots away and never return and never um, return to Earth. I like how so in the end, no one really um, won, and then you see Mordo betrayed by everything, become um, good, become um, become evil, become evil. He steals Penguin's um, power at the um, at the end, and I love the journey of um, Doctor Strange. One problem I would have probably have with this film was that it's kind of uh, rushed. But other than that, it was an awesome film, man. It was an awesome film, man. One, like I said, one of the best of the MCU, man. One of the best of the MCU. Then, of course, um, next is um, well, like I said, that concludes the MCU. Next is Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three, which I've seen multiple trailers of. The film looks awesome. Looks way better than the first. I can't wait to watch it, man. Well, this was my review of the Marvel MCU. A longer review of Guardians of the Galaxy, the first film, is coming next. All right, people. I'm done. Hit my music.